everybody, Megan and Maria here to answer once again one of the most common questions uh, that we get when people uh, write in about magic, which is how or what is the best way to teach my friends Magic the Gathering? We get this question all the time, so we're here with our five top tips on teaching your friend how to play magic. That's right. Magic is a great game, and it's a great question because it can be kind of complicated to teach your friend magic. Absolutely. I remember when we learned how to play magic, it was very complicated. I had questions for days. There weren't a lot of good resources to help me out. It's gonna. It's a process, and it takes a lot of time. And it's okay to let them know that up, up top. Yeah. Like we're gonna learn magic. It's gonna be a journey, but an awesome journey. Yes, and the destination is also great. Exactly. It is going to be like Lord of the Rings, except everything is cheerful. It's like instead of going to Mount Doom to drum, drop off the ring, you just have a they got feast. there, and Mount Doom gave them precious memories. <laughs> Number one. Number one. Uh, We recommend teaching two or three friends at once so they have someone of the same skill level to practice with. Yeah, if you're teaching your friend one-on-one, if that's your only option, you know, good for you, go for it. But if you have the choice to teach two people at the same time, it's wonderful because you won't always be slaughtering them with your amazing play skill because continually losing at a game is not really a way to get somebody uh, more invested or more involved. They're just going to feel bad about themselves all the time. Exactly. And also, it's totally legit if you're like, if you're a player who's been playing for a long time, like grinding a bunch of very easy matches um, with like very simple decks can be kind of tedious. And like, that's okay. Yeah. But if they're playing each other, they will both be like having a great time. They will both be getting the most enjoyment out of playing those matchups against each other. And as they both get better, they can make those matchups more and more difficult. And, you know, they'll have questions about how to play and then can go to each other uh, for those questions, too. Like sometimes you're a little scared if you have a question that you think is dumb or silly or too easy. Well, if you're teaching two people at the same time, chances are they're both going to have that same question. Nobody's going to be afraid to ask it or, yeah. or seem silly when they ask it. Megan and I can actually vouch for this tip because this is how we, in fact, learned how to play magic. That's right. Teach two people how to play, and five years from now, they're going to be on your YouTube screen. (laughs) Tip number two, start with basic monocolored decks. That's right. And we also recommend having those decks use very simple evergreen mechanics, stuff like flying uh, or things like that that aren't going to be too complicated for them and they're going to see them on a whole bunch of cards so they'll be able to get very familiar very quickly with those kinds of things. Right. So if you're thinking about green cards that might be something like trample. If you're thinking about mm-hmm. a red or a black card it might have something like menace on it. Something like that that is a just very simple easy to understand keyword or if you don't even want to start with keywords that's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, you can just have generic vanilla as we call them in the biz creatures in your monocolored decks and that way it's just very straightforward. I tap red lands, two red lands to pay for my creature that costs one and a red. This is easy and linear. I understand it. Absolutely. You can build these decks yourself, which is really nice, out of just like draft commons that you've got laying around. Right. Um, or there's also things like the rookie decks from Card Kingdom. Oh, uh, So fabulous. if you head over to cardkingdom.com slash cast, you'll see they have um, a rookie deck for each slice of the color pie. Um, And they sell them together as a pack. And each one is only $5. Brilliant. Yeah. So it's a great way, again, like build them yourself. Or if you're like, hey, I'm a little pressed on time, just throw five bucks at it. And like you'll have a deck that's perfect for teaching a new player. If you want a step up above that, once they've mastered the rookie decks, you can consider Card Kingdom's battle decks, Mm -hmm. which are uh, got... This one has two colors, or some of them even have three, and they can battle with those. Absolutely. And this is for when they're, like, ready to take, like, that next bump up in skill level. If those two new players are playing against each other, these will have some nice interactions. Tip number three is be ready for a lot of questions. Get your question bucket out there and let them plunk those questions in. Not right. literally, but literally if you want. Yeah, if you want to have a suggestion <laughs> box, except it says suggestions, it's questions, so it's yeah. a question box, get it out there. Even if it's your email, if it's text messaging, if it's face-to-face talking about those questions, you need to be ready to answer them, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, you're going to have to be patient because a lot of these questions might uh, seem a little trying to you. You're like, oh, first 
first strike, I have to explain this is so straightforward. Guess what, buddy? It's not. You didn't know first strike the first time you started playing, and that's okay. Yeah. It's um, it's there's a whole wide world of magic out there, and it's all right for people to take some time and have some questions when they're getting into it. When I teach a new player magic, I have a red phone next to my bed, just like the president, and I answer it only for magic emergency related questions. <laughs> Tip number four, point your friend towards resources online that can help them become a better magic player. That's right. Uh, this could be stuff like draft videos from your favorite uh, sites or streamers. Yeah. Uh, or it could be stuff like the level one series uh, written for daily MTG. Reed Duke knows what he's talking about. Uh, or plug for our own videos. Yes. Magic 101 by Magic the Amateuring. We made a brand new series that's all for teaching players the very basics of the game. If you're watching this video when it's released, which is March of 2018, uh, we've just started putting this series together. When? So, <laughs> so there won't be a lot of videos in there yet, but we're adding a new one every week. If you're watching this much further in the future, well, guess what? There's a lot of great videos in Magic There's 101. There's a whole great playlist job. out there that they can just <laughs> go and click on and start at the beginning and go right on through. Um, this means that, again, like when the two of you are like you and this new player are hanging out and playing magic, you can focus on like, hey, like let's sit down and like do the fun part. Like let's play the game and you don't have to be the person there talking them through again. Like what does flying mean? Hey, there's a video out there for what flying means. Uh, when they're starting to get into like the nitty gritty of strategy, they can go and start reading some strategy articles. Oh, cool. Um, which are really gonna help grow and expand their understanding of magic. And you know, the great thing about magic is that there's an event almost every weekend that you can watch on Twitch. Yeah. And while that will be pretty high level for them while they're first starting out. It might help uh, ignite their fire and their passion for magic, watching people compete on really big stages. Tip number five is to go with this new player to their very first in-store event. Yeah, be their buddy. Sometimes it's a little intimidating to walk into a game store for the first time, especially if you're not somebody who generally plays games in game stores and only buys them from game stores. Go with your friend, uh, perhaps lend them a deck for the tournament uh, and give them some advice as they sit down uh, to play their first round. Let them know that it's okay to make mistakes. You're there, it's your first time. Uh, people will hopefully just give you a high five and a smile and be glad to have you as part of the magic community. Absolutely. Uh, a great way to get started is maybe signing up for a two-headed giant event at a pre-release because everyone's a little bit on more even footing uh, because it's a very new set. So not everybody is out there knowing like what the best thing to do is in this brand new set. And two-headed giant means that you'll be right there beside them the whole time as they walk through these like interactions with other players for the very first time. Oh yeah, and speaking of a pre-release, what a way, great way to introduce somebody to Magic 2. Absolutely. You're gonna find people of all different skill levels at a pre-release, so it's totally fine to bring them, and it's fine for your friend to even tell the person they're playing against, hey, I'm a new player, this is my first event, as they introduce themselves, so that their opponent knows that they can kind of help them through anything they might be making kind of juvenile or rookie mistakes on as they're playing the game. And these are our top five tips for introducing new players to Magic the Gathering. 